Hey, everybody. Hello, cats and kittens. It's Carol Baskin, and I'm on here with David Exotic. Have you watched it yet, Dave? Have, have you, I'm working on it. You're working on it? Uh, Teo's mom walked out on it. Did I, did I say that one already? I think I already said that. Yeah, we, we yeah, tried. That, that, that's, that's what pushed me over the edge and really made me want to watch it. We tried. We, <laughs> we, if Athena was horrified, if Athena was horrified by it, there's got to be something about it that's Athena, interesting. Athena wouldn't even make it to through the end of episode two. So, <laughs> so we're rewatching yeah. Downton Abbey. You need, you need a haircut. You want me to come over and give you a, a nice, clean hair, a buzz yeah, job? There's got to be a way, to, there's got to be like a Zoom haircut again. They can make it look like you have a haircut on Zoom. I've got two sets of clippers, so I can give you a nice, a nice Phil Buzz oh, job. Clippers. They only do one thing now. <laughs> <laughs> That's, there is only one thing they do. What's happening in test prep land? So you see here, we got seven people. We got How many six. Of those people are us? Cut his hair like this. If you don't want his hair. Yeah, they, <laughs> Teo clipped your hair on, uh, you, <laughs> so you, yeah, your your head's cut. Your head's cut off. Um, what's going on in test prep land? Well, let's see. Uh, Cornell said that they're going to be kind of test optional today. Yeah. So what? What did, what, what did they, what'd they say? They said if you didn't what take did the, the if you didn't take the test, then uh, you can still submit an application. So they're sort of test optional, but if you took the test, submit. If you didn't, submit anyways. I think what's happening is colleges are panicked. I think everybody has anxiety. So I think what's going on is there's a lot of anxiety and that people are just generally saying, submit your test, your, your applications anyways, because they're not sure if there's going to be face-to-face -face classes in the fall um, for the people they've already admitted. And they're not sure if people are going to submit applications. So, I just, and, and, I just think. And, people... and I'm sure, I am sure too that um, you know they're worried about enrollment. They're worried about their yields for this year. They're worried about how many deposits they're going to get. Um, so I'm sure they want to make it as easy as possible for kids to apply. Uh, but if I were a student and I were applying to Cornell, I'd still be taking the test as many times as I can to get my score. But that's just me. <laughs> Carol Baskins killed her husband. Jack, Jack's on. Hey, Jack, how are you? Jack's on. I'm not getting any of a live chat on my phone. Peyton's here, too. What's up, Peyton? Peyton's on. All right, what are we going over today? Uh, we're going to go over words people screw up all the time. Um, so... Uh, in terms of uh, SAT and ACT score, thinking about what we're going to talk about tonight, which is words that are commonly confused, um, is not the most important thing in the world. Um, it's a good thing to have a handle on, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's important to remember that there are bigger fish to fry here. Uh, commas, uh, punctuation that we talked about, on Monday period, semicolons, fanboys, all of that stuff is, is super important. Um, this is one of those things though, that I think can, can help mark you as a literate adult. So knowing the difference between less and fewer and using them correctly. Oh, that's um, your big pet peeve, less and fewer. It's less and fewer. The who whom thing, we'll talk, we'll talk about who whom a little bit too. That one's not, not that big of a deal. I don't think that, uh, I, don't, I don't think that anybody gets called on who whom anymore, do you? I don't think they get called on, out on it as an educated adult, but we both say less or fewer. There is, there is one, I think, on the 1872, less or fewer. Uh-oh. He's frozen. Is he, fro is he frozen online? He looks a little frozen. You, you look a little frozen. Uh-oh. This isn't good. Now we get to deal with our first technical difficulty. What do we got? Got my internet here? Okay, you're back. Too, there should, there's too many people on the internet. I should be a little. I should. Uh, I'm not. I'm not very stable. I guess. Who knew? Yeah. All right. So let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about uh, words that people screw up all the time. 
so th- this will be this will be relatively short. Uh, we can talk about this if there's some things that I missed, Phil, that you want to talk about. Um, certainly, let's talk about it. Uh, but a couple of broad categories of words. First of all, um, it's important to keep in mind that uh, there's always going to be a smattering of vocabulary on the test. In some senses, it's predictable, the kinds of things that I'm going to tell you tonight are, are typical things that they test. Um, but, you know, once in a while, you're going to see a weird vocab word, right, Phil? Oh, yeah. So the, the, uh, was it the December 2018 test? I think they used the word issue as a, as a verb, right? The sound issued from the guitar. Um, or, uh, or, the word, or the word Don. Or dubbed. Everybody or dub, misses dubbed. It, it, dub, yeah, dubbed. Dubbed is one. Don is another one, as in we donned our swimming fins. Um, so vocab really comes from just reading and knowing what words mean, um, looking things up. Please, for the love of all that's holy, Google words you don't know. It's so easy to figure out what stuff means now. Um, so the important thing to remember is that words mean things, and uh, different words tend to mean different things sometimes. Okay. Okay. So the first big thing here, and this is probably the big take home lesson, uh, which is something that Phil and I are always on about anyway. Um, you're not going to see what you're not looking for. <laughs> so if you're not looking for some of these things, slides, yeah. the slippages and word meaning, you're going to miss them. So it's important to keep in mind that um, sometimes these things are buried in other questions where there's other stuff going on in the question and we don't see it. Um, do you have a slide? So here's here's an example. Share a slide. Uh, You're not sharing. Oh, am I not sharing? I'm not. Oh, it's super interesting. It's too bad you guys are missing it. <laughs> uh, good, because I just saw a mistake. So I'm glad you didn't see this as I talked through my non we're, we're, our, our, our Our production is so professional. We're working on it. It's the little green button at the bottom that says share screen. I know what I mean. I've been on Zoom a couple of times. Uh, let me just make a little change here. Okay. Yeah, if I don't share it, you can't see it. Let's try this one more time. Don't don't try to edit while you're there we go. Let's go into let's go into presentation mode here. Uh, let's get back here and start from the beginning. Okay. So, support and remember, words mean things. There we go. So, you're not going to see stuff that you're not looking for. So, make sure that you're looking for these small changes. These are like negative signs in math. They're very small, so sometimes people miss them. But they're very important because they change what numbers do. Um, so, uh, an example of a question that students often miss, and they often miss it, not because they don't know what the words mean, but because they just don't see it. Uh, would be this one right here. This is about uh, Benjamin Banneker. Uh, he calculated that it would have taken him. Oh no, this is the this is the uh, this is the corks in Portugal. He calculated it would have taken him and one other person more than a year's worth of eight-hour days to glue all the corks needed for the boat. So what happens in this question typically is people get so hung up on the apostrophes and the no apostrophes and the apostrophe s and the s apostrophe that they completely miss the fact that they are changing the word then back and forth between then and then. Um, have you ever had to explain, Phil, to a student the difference between then and then? Interestingly enough, it's on my presentation for tomorrow. So you, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't coordinate our presentation. So answers that are always wrong. It. People are still going to miss it. So the important thing here is just being able to see it. So remember that than is a comparison, as in x is less than 2 with an a, um, and then shows it as a marker of time, right? And again, I, I don't think that most people, mo most high school students, at least the students that we see, know the difference, but it's really easy to miss it because there's just that small little vowel change between an a and an e, uh, especially when it's in very tiny print on your test booklet. So make sure that you're paying attention over the course of the test. Uh, or as Phil and I like to say, RTFQ, read the freaking question, read the questions really carefully and do it with your pencil. So if you see that they're messing around with then and then, circle it, put a mark next to it, underline it, put an exclamation point just to make sure that you're actually, um, that you're actually attending to it. Okay. Um, 
these are some sets of words that the uh, that the ACT and the SAT like to test. They're relatively rare, but they still occur consistently. So these are just infrequent question types. So during um, so during quarantine, it's worth knowing rare words. <laughs> it's worth knowing rare words like affect and effect. Um, okay. Affect and effect, this, this one, the SAT really likes this. Um, the ACT, this is not a favorite on the ACT, but for those of you taking the SAT. The SAT loves this one. The SAT loves it, and they always have. Um, affect and effect, I'm not going to make this super complicated because we can make this super complicated um, pretty easily, actually. Um, if you affect something, you have an effect on it. These are alphabetical in this sentence, A and then E. If you affect something, you have an effect on it. So... Affect is a verb and effect is a noun. This is true often in real life and always on the SAT ACT. So the reason I'm saying this on the SAT ACT is that affect can also be a noun and effect can yeah. also be a verb. They're actually both both parts of speech. Um, but those opposite usages are, are, are super, super, super rare. Um, this is the way that you're going to see it on the test. So the other way that you can remember this, so you can remember this sentence, which is alphabetical, A then A. If you affect something, you have an effect on it. Um, another sort of visual way is that you can imagine that the A from the affect is like an upside down V for verb. I know. I like the alphabetical thing. That's good. Yeah. So like if I affect like, you, I have an effect, effect on you. Yeah. If you affect something, you have an effect on it. Um, so you would say, how is this going to affect my grade with an A? Or you would say, what kind of effect will it have on it? Uh, or another way to say this, uh, Phil and I were talking about this last night about articles, words like a uh, and an and the. Um, those go in front of nouns, not in front of verbs. So if you affect something, you have an effect on it. Affect with an A is a verb on the test. Effect with an E is a noun. Okay. Um, yeah, your favorite, like, less and fewer. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. So, th so this is part of a broader category of question where the SAT and ACT are asking you about um, uh, words that show comparison. Um, the less and fewer one doesn't actually come up that often, but much and many and a mountain number come up occasionally, um, which maps onto the same pattern. What happens is people will often say less when they mean fewer, not the other way around. So there's a really simple way to think about this, which is, oh, I got those backwards. I got them backwards. Flip them, guys. The ones on the, the <laughs> ones on the right are countable, and the ones on the left are not countable. That's super confusing. I'm gonna have to fix that. Uh, these guys here are the ones that are countable. I have fewer friends than I used to. I have many more stories to tell than I did when I was younger. I have a greater number of things that I need to do today. Less to much and amount are uh, one are for amounts that are not countable. Um, there's less water than there used to be. I have much more fun at work now than I used to. Um, there's a, a greater amount of rainfall today than there was yesterday. So these guys on the right are countable. These guys on the left, despite what my headings say, are not countable. Um, and I, and I added integer in here because Phil gave me a hard time a couple of years ago about an edge case, which would be an English teacher saying something like, I want your paper to be five pages or less. Well, you would say, no, it shouldn't be less. It should be fewer because you can count the number of pages. Um, it actually needs to be countable by integer. <laughs> so fewer than five could only mean four, three, two, one, or zero, but less than five could be five and a half. So uh, stay tuned as Phil talks to you about the difference between integers and non-integer numbers. Well, I wasn't okay. being a jerk on there. I was asking you why you say five, no, page, totally. five pages or less, and you answered it with could be 4.7 pages. So I had to think about it, though, because it's just one of those things. Again, we just sort of know, or, you know, um, I want you to drive less than 60 miles an hour. You wouldn't say drive fewer than 60 miles an hour. That should sound wrong, hopefully. Okay, so a quick example of this in action from a real ACT from Form 1874. McCoy invented a device that released oil while a train was in motion, substantially reducing the number of maintenance stops, had the effect of blah, blah. Okay, so there are a couple of grammatical things going on in here, but the big thing is about uh, lessening the frequency, subtracting the amount, lowering the amount. So 
<clears throat> this is a good example. Um, you would reduce uh, you would reduce a number of maintenance stops. That's okay. You can reduce the number, make it smaller. Um, lessening the uh, lessening the frequency. Mm, uh, you wouldn't lessen the number. You wouldn't lessen the frequency. What would you do? You'd reduce the frequency. A frequency is reduced. That is correct. Frequency reduced. You wouldn't less because you can't count numbers of frequency. Now you could say the frequency is several megahertz. Right? It's it's several megahertz fewer. Probably wouldn't say that. It'd still be less because this is the issue, right? Math always deals with non-integers. The assumption is that you're dealing right, and in math, usually the assumption is that you're dealing with any real number, uh, not necessarily an integer. So we always use like less than for math. Okay, uh, and then subtracting the amount. Um, that one is okay, lowering the amount, okay. But again, this is the like lessening the number, you wouldn't lessen the number, <clears throat> uh, you would lower the number. Cool. Uh, who whom, uh, won't spend a whole lot of time on this. This comes up once per test, sometimes twice. Um, this is the only place that we really need to think about subject and object pronouns. So on the left-hand side, we have the words I, she, he, they, um, these are all pronouns that have to be subjects. If you remember from yesterday and the day before, for those of you that were those of you that were here, um, we talked about subject and object a little. Subject is the noun that's doing the action, and the objects are the nouns that are getting the action. So uh, you could say <laughs> I threw the ball, but you wouldn't say he threw the ball to I. You could say he threw the ball to me. So this pattern, I think most people get. I think every native English speaker gets this. I don't a lot, hear a lot of people walking around saying, I saw she at the party, her was having a really good time. So getting a handle on the uh, she and her distinction or he and him distinction is pretty easy. The issue with who and whom is that people don't use the word whom that frequently anymore. We've lessened the frequency of our usage of the word whom. Um, but who and whom falls into the exact same pattern. Uh, who is a subject and whom is an object? Uh, and you'll notice that I got my headings on this table right this time. I didn't get them backwards. So the shortcut for this is remembering the three pronouns that end in M here, which are him, them, and whom. So the shortcut is you don't have to deconstruct or analyze the sentence and identify subject and object. All you have to do is plug in him or them. And if him or them works, then the correct answer is whom. If him or them does not work, then the correct answer has to be who. Him, them, whom. Him, them, whom? Him, them, whom? Him, them, whom? Him, them, whom? Him, and whom? Them, and whom? Him, and them, and him, them, whom? It's the whom, him, them, whom song. It's confusing. We got to okay. come up with a bunch of TikToks. That's going to be a good TikTok. Let's, let's, uh, let's take a look at this guy right here. Again, from an ACT. Uh, and I give you an extra sentence for context here. Uh, indeed, she identifies strongly. Wait, 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 wait. Back up. Yeah. Go, go back to the question. Uh, that the question before this, what's the right answer? Oh, I, I keep doing that, right? Yeah. Uh, substantially reducing the number of maintenance stops. Um, and this is important. What they're actually testing here uh, is not really this word comparison that, that helps you get rid of a couple of these. What they're doing is they're testing what's called parallel structure. Substantially reducing the number had the effect of making travel much more effective. So say. when you re when you're reducing the number, what part of speech is that? What is a reducing? Uh, reducing the number of maintenance stops. That's actually a noun. That's actually a noun. See, this is this is where things get really complicated. That's a noun phrase. Um, That's a noun re phrase. Reducing yeah, the number is a noun phrase. Reducing so the number. And making effect of making. So making here is the parallel structure. Yeah, yep. So the right answer is reducing. You're not subtracting the, there's not a, an amount of stops. Correct, because it would be a number of stops. Because again, if we go back to my little chart here, you can count the number of stops. Again, my headings are backwards, but you can count the number of stops. So because you can count them, it wouldn't be lessening it would be reducing the number. All right, I'll put that one back in tomorrow. Amount one, and number. Here's an interesting one, like 
and not all of these words are tied to countableness or not. Like reducing is not, right? You could say I reduced my fever or I reduced the amount of coffee that I drank or uh, you could say um, I reduced the number of things that I had to do today. So that's, that's one that could go either way. Question. All right. So let's do who, whom. What are the three words we need to remember, Phil? Him, them, whom. Sweet. Him, them, whom. Cool. Uh, let's take a look here. Indeed, she identifies strongly with the griots of West Africa. Those village storytellers where they use songs, poems, and narration. Okay. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the where because I'm looking. This is a pronoun. Where is a pronoun? Who's a pronoun? Whom's a pronoun? They is also a pronoun. So this says where, and here I'm talking about people, storytellers, where is always a place. You wouldn't say the boy where I went to school when I was younger. <laughs> it would be with whom. Okay, so now we got who and whom. Let's try to plug in him or them. Uh, this is plural. Them use songs, poems, and narration. Nope, them do not use songs. They use songs, therefore the correct answer is who. And if we go back and we look at what who matches up with, this matches up with he and they. Let's see if they works. They use songs, poems, narration. Yep, that's the answer. Um, and then reading this out loud should get you rid of the that. Uh, the that should go away pretty easily. Those village storytellers that they use songs, not so much. Cool. So the correct answer is... Who? Correct answer is who? Who? This is a who. Horton hears a who. Who? 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 All right, definitely going over this one tomorrow. Got this one on tomorrow too. Whom is a big one. Um. So those are the that that was it. That's the like those are that's the like really really big stuff. What else do you want to talk about, Phil? Talk to me. What did I miss? So on. I don't want to hone in on your presentation. I don't want to. I don't want to steal material from your presentation tomorrow. Oh, I have, I have, I think I have a pretty good presentation for tomorrow of things that are always wrong. We're gonna summarize what you've done, and socks with, socks with sandals, always wrong. <laughs> socks with sandals. Now, sandals. No, I do not agree with that. Socks with sandals have made a huge comeback, man. I, I, I don't understand that at all. I think middle-aged white guys have been getting made fun of for years. Now all of a sudden, the kids are doing it, and it's cool. Yes, that's how it works. Bummer. We start the trends. We and then they we, capitalize on. We do start the trends. Okay, so we've been, we've been on him, them, whom, than, then, countables versus subjects and objects, affect versus effect. Yep, affect, effect, than with an A, then with an E. The big thing is really watching out for those things and then knowing how to test the tricky ones like the who, whom. Um, again, a lot of those, like there, there, and there, most people don't miss that. Most students who miss, I think, the kids that we work with, right? The ones who miss a there, there, there question are just not reading carefully. It's not because they don't know the difference. I don't think I've ever had to teach anyone the difference between there, there, and there. Did you make pizza today? We did. Yeah. So my wife just posted on the chat pizza. <laughs> oh, I made onion rings tonight. You made onion rings? Do you have a fryer? Uh, now I just use my Dutch oven and fried. Ooh, Dutch oven fried is good. Yummy. I gotta yeah, make... I'm going gonna, gonna to weigh 300 pounds by the next time you see me. <laughs> well, that's okay. You can stand a yeah, little... You better put some, you better put some on weight on. Room. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking really skinny. Okay, what's All right, the... Guys. All right, so this is, this is your last night on. What's the best way to uh, practice grammar? Practice, practice. Practice tests. Go to our website, go to the student resources link at the top of our website after you subscribe and like this video. Subscribe and like, guys. Um, go to the student resources page on our website. We got lots of free tests there. Oh, Jack made a look, comment. Look at, the ones that you're, look at the ones that you're missing. Answer questions. Check the ones that you got wrong. <laughs> figure out what concept you're missing. <clears throat> Is oh. it testing commas? Is it testing word choice? All I have to say is, Jack, you don't want to see me in sandals and socks. <laughs> Jack said, kids kids make everything. Who said kids make everything cool? Oh, Peyton said that. Jack said, dad's shoes.
come back because the dad thanks the kids. Dad, dad shoes come back. You don't want to see me. And I do wear sandals all summer long, but I, I go without socks. So, yeah, man. All right. So practice, practice, practice. Download. Here, here's what you can do. If you go to student resources on our website, the do the English tests over and over and over again. And right underneath them on student resources is our solutions manual. So read why the answers are correct and incorrect. And so we'll have to, I'll have to throw some questions at you. That's what I'll, that's what I'll do the next time we do a grammar week. Um, yeah, let's do it. That'll be fun. I'll, I'll put, I'll post you on here some questions that, that I'll pull off some old tests and we'll see how well you do. Let's do it. Yeah, that, that'll be fun. Will you, well, uh, will you, will you come, will you uh, go on the uh, chat tomorrow night? Are you busy at 830? Uh, yeah, no, 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 it's on my schedule. I'll do it. Okay, so I'm gonna be there. All right, tomorrow night we're having a competition of who can beat you with the right answer. We're gonna have five questions, and we're gonna see who can beat you to the correct answer in the comments. So there's gonna be a, how many people are on here? Like fifteen, nineteen, yes. That are not us. Tell your friends, guys. Have your friends come on tomorrow night. Let's double it. Yeah, let's let's, get let's make a contest. A twenty dollar bill in the mail. Um, what, 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 people don't do the mail. They do Venmo, Phil. Venmo. <laughs> I was, I was gonna say, in the in the mail is a little too creepy. Get a, getting something from it. All right. I have a secret stock of N95 face masks. I've been hoarding. All right. So so tw twenty dollar. Tw all right. The twenty dollar challenge. I will email this out to everybody. There's going to be five questions at the end that David doesn't know because I'm going to pull them off of tests that he doesn't know. Yay! That's super exciting. All right, so I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull questions that compare to the ones that I say are always wrong at 8:30. So at the end of 8:30 prep tomorrow night, we're gonna have the $20 Venmo challenge. Awesome! All right, yeah. we'll, all right. We'll see you then. I'm Phil McCaffrey. This is David Cerniglia. We'll see you tomorrow night when you compete with him. All right, guys. All right. Have a